Hey guys. So, um, yeah, <laughs> like that's not obvious. Oh, it's just paper right there. Um, <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you, though. Um, so uh, a lot of people think that I'm a female on the phone all the time. And um, I used to get in arguments with people like all the time. And I'm like, I don't know why you keep on calling me a ma'am. Clearly, I'm a sir. And then they would respond by like canceling my credit cards and stuff. So now I just go along with it. It's much easier that way. And they say, ma'am, and I'm like, yes, that's me. That's um, I'm ma'am. <laughs> Let's just go along with this. Yeah. But I have this weird thing about myself. Like when I'm lying, I get really nervous that I'm lying. And then I start exaggerating because I'm nervous. Like I called to schedule my haircut last week. And I called and I was like, hi, do you guys have anything available next Tuesday for a men's haircut? Oh, uh, let's see. Yes, I have something around 7 o'clock. What's the name of your husband? His name's Cody. That's the name of my husband. We've been married so long. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Um, does your husband have any personal preferences on who cuts his hair? Yes, actually, last time he went there, you guys cut his hair, and I swear it looked just like Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> he was not happy about that. I'm so sorry to hear about that. It's okay, it's fine. You know, he's just very specific about his hair and he just gets very angry about it sometimes. I think he might have anger problems. <laughs> By the end of this conversation, I was like, he drinks a lot and sometimes he takes it out on me and the kids. You should call someone, I'm scared. <laughs> Who's drinking tonight? <laughs> yeah, it's Monday. Let's get it together, people, okay? All right, <laughs> people. Open stage alcoholics. This is an AA meeting, people. Okay, great. I'm, I thought I was in the right place. Um, <laughs> um, I love drinking sometimes, a little bit too much, though, and I end up at places that I have no business being at. Like last week, I got so fucked up that I ended up at a frat party. I just like showed up. I'm like, hey, like all drunk. And like every time I go to a place like that, like all the straight dudes are like, oh, dude, there's a gay guy here. There's a gay guy here. Uh, I don't know if you heard, there's a gay guy here, there's a gay guy here. I don't know why I'm rapping right now. Um, <laughs> but the same thing happens every single time. Like we end up getting drunk and by the end of the night they end up like weirdly loving me and they're always like, you know what dude, like, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, like, uh, when I first saw you I was like, great faggot <laughs> but like the more i got to know you i was like you're kind of a cool faggot you know <laughs> what do you say to that thank you you're a sweetheart thanks man <laughs> we do this weird thing though like where we stare at each other like we are these mystical creatures we've never seen before they ask me such awkward questions like one dude was like so do you wear panties <laughs> and i was like <laughs> Jesus, duh. <laughs> One dude, I swear, was like freaking out. He was like, so if I have like a friend, you know, and my friend likes girls and stuff, you know, like he likes like tits and like ass and like, like fucking girls and stuff, but like he may have let a gay guy blow him. Is my friend gay? Do I have a gay friend? And I was like, you know, I really can't answer that question for your friend at all. Like, I can't do that. I suggest maybe he should do some, like, soul searching or something. Maybe find out who he is as a person. But I will say this. Next time you're coming, can you say something? Because I can't see out of my left eye. <laughs> I hope some of you are eating right now. Um... Awkward stuff happens to me on a daily basis. Like, I was just minding my own business today, just grocery shopping, and this little girl is just crazy. She's just running up and down the aisles, just all crazy. And she stops and looks at me. And then she looks at her mom and she's like, Mom, is that a boy or a girl? I knew, I knew at that moment that I wanted to scare the shit out of that little girl, so I was like, I'm both. <laughs> Take that little girl, yes. Um, usually the mom is like too tired and exhausted to like at least apologize on her kid's behalf. She's just like, come on, sweetie, let's just leave the nice hermaphrodite alone. <laughs> um, 
I was, uh, don't, you don't have to say aw for this, it's okay. Um, I was um, picked on a lot in school, and I moved around to a lot of different schools. So when I moved to Dallas, this is like an elementary school or middle school, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change my look. I'm going to look hardcore, you know, so people don't mess with me anymore. And I was like, Mom, I need a haircut. She's like, all right, sweetie. And she brought me to the Smart Cuts at Walmart. And the lady was like, what do you want? And I was like, I want something tough. So she cut my hair and then spin me around the chair and I looked in the mirror and she gave me the Kate plus eight haircut. <laughs> you know, it's just like sad and flat in the front and then the back is just schizophrenic. It is, it's all gelled and spiky and crazy. It looks like I've been out in the rain for a little bit and then someone glued an Outback Steakhouse blooming onion to the back of my head. <laughs> And then I went to Hot Topic and I was like, and the, this gay bear, he was like, what do you need? And I was like, give me something hardcore. And he sold me this leather choker with like studs sticking out of it. <laughs> and I wore this and styled my hair and I showed up my first day of school. And the weird thing is that it worked. Like nobody talked to me at all. And at the end of the first week, like half the student body was like, dude, you see the new kid? I'm not fucking with her. That's one hardcore lesbian right there. <laughs> She looks like she could fuck someone's face up. Um, I was the only gay person in my high school and it was cool, but like it got really annoying sometimes because everyone would always feel the need to like come up and tell me about the only other gay person that they know or their gay cousins. Like, I don't care about your gay cousins or how much they like share or colonics. Like, I don't care. They always came up and like try to like hook me up with them too. They're like, oh, I need to introduce you to Trevor. You guys would just love each other. You can go to your musicals and do your yoga stuff. And what is that that you guys love? Your, your AIDS pride parades. It's like whenever there's only like one black person in high school and then someone comes up, they're like, you know what? I need to introduce you to Jamal. You guys would just love each other. You guys could go you know, to your basketball games and your hippie hop shows. You could steal things together. Oh, it's all right. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I quit my job recently. I was um, a makeup artist at Neiman Marcus. <laughs> I literally could not have chosen a more cliche job for myself. But, um, you know, it was, it was really annoying and I hated it because like all day long they would force me to do like makeovers on these really stupid, annoying, rich, like mean high school girls. And they came in and they just smelled. They just smelled like self-tanner and cheap perfume and just the smell of fucking stupid. <laughs> And they came in and they always like had a picture on their phone of what they wanted to look like for the day. They're like, so this is the picture of Kim Kardashian and I just honestly love like her eyes and her lips. You see how they pop, yeah. And this is a picture of Megan Fox and I'm really just in love with the shape of her head. So if you can make my head look like her head, that'd be great. See how her eyes pop and her lips pop? I want my eyes to pop, I want my lips to pop. I want everything popping out of my stupid fucking face. Can you do that please? I'm like, yes, I know how to do that. You wanna look like a whore, it's so easy. And then um, they had no consideration at all because, you know, it's hard doing makeovers and stuff. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one in this room that's ever said that. It's hard doing makeovers, people. <laughs> And they always like, you know, they had no posture at all. I don't know what's happened to spines with people. Do people have spines anymore? They sat down on the chair like this, all self tanned and stupid, like some dumb chicken nugget sitting there. <laughs> But you know what's cool? I like working in cosmetics. Um, I get to meet a lot of different people and learn a lot about them. Like one of my favorite customers, she's really tall, pretty, long blonde hair, and she has a really soft-spoken voice like this, like she might work in a spa or something. And um, I was putting makeup on her one day. <laughs> That's how I do it. <laughs> I was putting makeup on her one day, and I noticed a little bit of stubble on her chin. And I was like, hey girl, you know, do you ever get waxed or anything? You have a little bit of like a girl beard. And she goes, well, I didn't want to say anything, but that's actually because I'm a man. And I was like, oh, that's cool, girl. And I said it in a way that was like, I won't tell anybody, don't worry about it. But then I guess I made the mistake of telling her a joke because she let out the manliest laugh I have ever heard in my life. Like at that point, everyone knew she was a man. I told her the joke and she was like, <laughs> That's funny. That's my time, thank you guys. <laughs>